Yeah. If I were a cursing man, there'd be a lot of bleeps in this video. Hi, we're Steve and Audra. We've been in the process of building out our van and traveling around the East Coast on a low budget for about two years now. We bought a Renogy 100 watt flexible solar panel from ShopSolarKits.com not long after we started our build. See what kind of power we can generate. But until now, we've only used it on a few occasions because it wasn't permanently mounted. Today we are mounting the panel to the roof of our 2019 Ford Transit High Roof Camper Van. Our goal is to do so without drilling any holes in the van. Sometimes, okay, who are we kidding? Most of the time, when we work on our van build, it doesn't go as smoothly as we expect by any stretch of the imagination. So far it's always worked out in the end, but great Wilbur's Willie can the process be quite challenging. This project is no exception. We hope you can learn from or just enjoy watching our mistakes as we get close to the finish line of our van build project. There is a little factory plug in that corner. I've already marked it with some painter's tape. I just need you to push up while I'm up top to, so I know that I have the right spot up top. So you want me to just, it's that factory plug that's already, that's in the roof, right? So right now we're working on identifying our plans for our solar panels and how we're gonna wire them in through the van. <laughs> yep. I can feel his finger broken down. Oh, that's wild. All right, so I can feel her finger pushing up against that one. So I know that I have the right one and you can see now why I just wanted to make sure there's three of them pretty close together. Didn't want to assume anything. So this one, I'll put a little bit of tape on it so I don't forget here in my old age. So now what I'm working on is the flexible solar panel placement. Figuring out what the best spot is for not only this panel, but any future panels we might want to put up here. I, I was initially thinking of putting it right here, right beside the vent but there's just not quite enough room to tape it down. So I gotta move it forward, but I think that'll still work because we'll still have plenty of room on the passenger side and maybe a little bit of room for a third panel running side to side. So if you remember way back when, probably a couple years ago now, close to a couple years ago, I ran a string in this back column for a guide for our eventual solar wire. So I just want you to pull on the wire that I, or the string that I have tied off the top. Just make sure. Are you grabbing it right now? Yeah. <laughs> okay. What? It's just funny because I can see you like doing something. All right. So I can see it. Yep. So that's it. It doesn't seem to have much give, but that's it. You pull it up again. Just pull it. <laughs> it doesn't really want to move. Is that going to be a problem? I hope not. Before I go and get too far down the road, I just wanted to make sure that the cables that I just got yesterday do indeed work. So, just laid it on the ground and ran the cable in to the side of the delta. And indeed, you can see that at the moment it's pulling about 63 watts. So that tells me that the cables that came in the mail yesterday do indeed work. So I can feel confident to proceed to the next step. All right, so now that I have a general idea of where I want to place the panel, I have marked it with some painter's tape around the corners, like so. My plan is after I have the cables run through the hole, I'm gonna probably take this back off 
give the van roof a good wash down, get all the dirt off so that the tape that I'm using, the Eterna Bond tape, has a nice clean surface to adhere to. And now, to the point where I'm going to start running my cables. And again, it was important to have a general idea, at least, of where I wanted the panel to be so that I know how much extra cable to run on the top part. So I measured this pretty good before I ordered the cable, but I am going to run it down just the back side of the van here and indeed make sure that I ordered enough before I go cutting and splicing. So it does indeed look like I ordered enough, which is good, as I went to great lengths to measure everything. My plan, I think, at the moment, is to run it down, I believe this is called the D column. Anyway, it's the back driver's side column. The inside of this, and maybe just remove this piece and run the cables out through there. I think that might be my best bet, easiest bet. There is a little hole right there. That might be a bit more challenging. These cables are a bit thicker than I was anticipating. I went ahead and got the 10 gauge, thinking that uh, for whatever future panels we put up, I'm going to need that extra gauge wire. So the next thing I need to tackle is where to splice this wire. I'm going to have to cut it somewhere because there's no way that these ends are going to fit through that hole that's up on the roof. And uh, so i got to find the best place to cut it so these wires can feed down through the column and obviously I need to leave enough to, uh, to get to the splice and uh, reconnect it once the cable is down through the column. There's not a ton of extra room, extra length. If, uh, if I'm coming out of this panel right here, that. So probably going to have to make this cut somewhere about here where my thumb and finger are. All right, I think I'm getting closer and closer to actually cutting this wire, which would be the first big kind of decision in this project. It's one of those decisions where you do it and there's no turning back. This wire was only about $23 or so. So it's not the end of the world if I were to screw something up at this point. But if you've been following along so far with our van build, you know that we don't like to waste money. So I have thought about this and thought and measured and thought more and measured more. But I think I've got it all figured out. I think I've got plenty of slack both on this top side, on the roof side, and then down at the uh, entry point where it's going to come out through the column. So I think I'm at the point now where I'm ready to cut this wire, and then I'll be able to feed it down through this plug that's hidden underneath this duct tape. And here we are on the ground level. Yeah, I've got the wires coming down, and I think I'm going to have enough slack to come out maybe of this panel here, or I'm thinking about maybe this hole right here. Either way, it should give me just enough to make the cut on this one cable, at least. This other one, 
It's a little bit longer just because of the way the solar panel sits up on the roof. So if I were to cut right about at this tape mark, should give me enough to cut and splice it together. Well, moment of truth. Time to cut this wire. No turning back now. So now that I've taken the drastic step of cutting the wires, the next big drastic step will be to puncture a hole through this seal so I can begin feeding the wires down through. So I had, some time ago, run this string back down through the back column in anticipation of running this solar wire down through. So going to attach the string to the wire hopefully and use that to help guide the wire down through the column. I'm hoping that this duct tape will hold the string together as the, we feed it through. Could be tricky. Ooh. Yeah, we should have had two strings. Able to feed it through? Yeah, I've already pulled some down through. I'm more concerned about going through the column. Yeah, I'm getting it, I'm pushing it down through the column. All right, hold on. Yep, it's. Yeah. Yep, it seems to be. Although, it might just be kind of piling up at the top and not going down through. All right, here, move it around. Move the wire around. I'm trying. Like back and forth. Pull it. I could see it. Keep pulling, and I'll see if I can see it here. No, I can't. But I know it. I could. Yep, yeah, I could see it. So it's. So. so we've got it. It's already down about halfway. All right, so I can see it through this little factory cutout right where I have the string taped to the cable. So we're indeed, uh, it's indeed working. I'm going to go back up on the ladder and feed some more through. I have my lovely assistant helping me guide the wire through the column as I'm feeding it through the roof. through. All right, just to give you a bit of an update, we are helplessly stuck at the moment. The uh, string became unattached to the cord, the cable, and now we think we're stuck on something. There might be some insulation stuck in there. And I also think there is some sort of like metal shelf that is getting hung up on. So we're having a bit of a bit of a time with this. This is it exactly how you thought. Well, I can see the the junction where we taped it all together. So it appears that we have a line, one of the two cables coming this way to the junction of duct tape, and then somehow. 
it appears the other line is going that way. And there's that ledge, and it's somehow hung up on something down below the ledge. There's no sense. We are so helplessly stuck on whatever. So you're just trying to cut apart the tape now? Maybe it would have been easier to start out with two lines not taped together to begin with. Where's your little metal? That's right there, the hook. Yeah, it probably would have been better just to feed one at a time. One at a time. Oh my goodness. Lesson number one. Maybe. So it's really fun trying to do surgery through two little holes. <laughs> so with the X-Acto knife, I'm able to kind of blindly stab at it and I'm able to get a hold of little bits and pieces of duct tape. I'm hoping that that'll be enough to at least free one line. Unreal. All right, so we have made a little bit of progress. We were able to pull at least one end of one cable out and uh, obviously hindsight's 2020. This duct tape was a super bad idea. <sighs> so. So it doesn't make any sense that there's one cord in there somehow stuck. We're halfway there. What's funny is from beneath, we can kind of see up when I hold a mirror there. And there really isn't that much in the way, but Whatever is in the way, we found it, and we found it, but good. So, now we need to try to get, I guess, the other line untangled from whatever. I don't know how it's possible that so one line cable is so tangled. This has got to help at least a little bit that we get got some of the duct tape. Oh, is there still duct tape on the other piece? Uh, there might be a little bit. Uh, this looks like most of it. It's the only thing I can think of that's making it stuck. Uh, so, right. try to pull the other line. Okay. And it's like completely, like completely stuck. How does that, I don't understand. I, it makes no sense. The only thing I can think of is there's enough duct tape on the end of that line that whatever it's got itself snagged on is holding on for dear life. <laughs> well, that's why I was wondering, should we try to push it, push it more now? And like to shove it down through or something? Well, it'd be nice to get some sort of confirmation as to where it is at least. Well, you can see. Okay. Oh. Okay. Oh. Is it coming up? Yeah. Uh, uh, there's the little sucker. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Unreal. So what in the world could it have been stuck on? Yeah, regroup a little bit. I wish I was over dramatizing this for the YouTube purposes, but not at all. If I were a cursing man be a lot of bleeps in this video. I don't understand. What's now I just feel like taking a little bit of a breather and uh, regroup. Maybe we just need to feed one at a time. Anyway. How about we eat some lunch? Well, here's the other thing. It's a nice day and the forecast I think is okay, but the last thing I want is rain to come through. I mean, the hole is not that big as you saw, but I guess I could patch it up with something quick, but I'd like to get it done. Get it done and get it sealed. At least the wires run. Then we can get it sealed and tackle the rest whenever. So, you wanna try feeding one at a time? Right now, you don't wanna take, I thought you were gonna take a break and regroup. 
That was my regroup. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Just gotta hydrate. You're not hungry? Weirdo. You're not hungry yet? No. I'm hungry for a wire to get fed through. Alright, so a bit of an update. We were <laughs> able to get the string back down through. We put a fishing weight on the end of the string and dropped it through. And that was complicated. Kept hitting that. There's a little shelf inside this column that we keep hitting. So now we're trying to tape that string onto just one wire and try to do just one wire at a time. Hopefully that'll work. So we're trying to be smart about this. Before we try to drop this single cable, we're attaching another string. In this case, it's a ribbon because we couldn't find any other string around the house. So that, thinking positively here, when this cable is able to be dropped, that now we have a new line to drop the other cable, if that makes sense. And Steve did good. I told him he had to pick an ugly color of my ribbon. He went in and picked this ugly yellow. Good job, Steve. All right, wanna see if it's gonna work? Let's do it. Yay! <laughs> Yay! Success! Only two hours later, we're halfway there. All right, Audra's got the second cable, second and final cable, hooked up to her ribbon. Hopefully we'll be able to feed that one through as easily as the last one. Here you go. Ready? Yep. All right, you pulling? Yep. You are? I don't want to pull too hard. Well, you got to pull some. It's not doing anything. Do you feel tension when I pull? No, at the moment. You don't feel any tension? Are we stuck on something again? Now I feel it. Okay. You need to pull. Is it stuck? Feeding it. All right. All right. Keep so, feeding it. All right. Go ahead. Hold on. All right. Yay! We did it. Yay! Yeah. Finally. All right. So I cleaned underneath the solar panel, and I gave it a wipe down with some rubbing alcohol. Now I'm just going through my final measurements, make sure I like the placement of it before I go ahead and put the tape down. This is where I made the bold choice to not use an entry gland. Time will tell if the sealant will hold. I plan to check it often. Worst case scenario, if the sealant fails, I'll have to install the gland later down the road. So after much consideration, I decided to not come out of this panel or any holes on this side just because of all of the activity of bringing the bikes in and out. I want to try to avoid you know, snagging any of the cables and doing any damage. 
So I decided to sneak it through this little panel that I just installed in the back. And that should give me enough to run the cables alongside of this stud. And then up along the underside of the bed. And now to splice these wires together, I've purchased a butt splice and I'm going to crimp these together like so. And we should be up and running. Now that we have the butt splices together, that's a funny term. Moment of truth. Let's go check out and see what kind of power we're drawing. Alrighty, we're drawing about 68 watts. Somewhere between 68 and 70 watts. On a day like today. It is partly cloudy, a little bit hazy, so maybe not 100% direct sunlight. So I had a package of this heat shrinkable tubing in my possession, I'm kid you not, for probably a decade. And uh, so I used a piece of that to finish off the joint. If nothing else, it's more aesthetically pleasing. Alrighty folks, so that's how we installed our flexible solar panel without drilling any holes in the roof. Just a reminder that we have a build series as well as our travel series where we show how we do life on a budget. Please drop us a comment below, let us know you've been watching, we love hearing from you. Until next time, see ya.